Isn't it more important to accept Jesus than to uh, than to live morally or virtuously? Uh, is it not more important to accept Jesus than to live virtuously? Right. Good question. In America today, spirituality and faith and, and ethics are divorced. Jesus doesn't allow for that. If you put your faith in Jesus, there are ethical implications. Isn't it true that... Um, like what is it uh, to get to heaven you cannot get to heaven uh, on acts alone you have to accept Jesus right so if you um, if you're a bad person before and later in your life you accept Jesus then uh, you can still get to heaven but unless you accept no. Jesus you can't get to heaven Jesus and the New Testament point out that if you accept Jesus your life has to change if it doesn't change you have to go back but if it and does question. change right then you then it's you can get to heaven if you genuinely put your faith in Christ which will be shown by a change in your lifestyle then you're going to heaven but but if you don't accept Jesus uh, your entire life do you go to hell if you reject Christ what are you rejecting two things first of all you're rejecting God's clearest revelation of himself mm -hmm. and secondly you're rejecting God's offer of forgiveness Mm -hmm. Christ bled and died on a cross to forgive you and me for our sin. But you can live by the you can live by the laws that uh, God wants us to live by, or that your God wants us to live by. But if you don't accept Him as God, then you uh, suffer eternally. God created you with a free will. If you exercise your free will in such a way that you live your life separate from Him. He's not going to force you against your will no, to I'm spend not. eternity with him in heaven. You're not. Instead, you will make a decision uh -huh. to live your life separate from God. He respects your free will. He respects you as a person. Based on your decision to live your life separate from him, you'll spend eternity separate from him. The Bible calls that hell. Uh, you do not accept Jesus as God, then you uh, suffer, correct? No, if you live a morally perfect life, you don't need Christ's forgiveness. You're a morally perfect specimen. What You'll go straight to sin? heaven. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200. You're a perfect moral human being. But if you're like me, if you have sin, then you do need Christ's forgiveness, God's forgiveness, and he offers that to us through the death of Christ on a cross. If, now, if you're morally perfect, forget about not. Christ. You're morally perfect. It's uh, understood that nobody's perfect, but if you if you live if you try to live the best, but you don't. Well, my question to you is: uh, if you were God, <laughs> if you were God, would you make these people suffer that uh, lived virtuously if they did not accept you? Sir, if you are good, if you're a good God, you cannot allow evil to ultimately win. Right. The only reason there's going to be a day of judgment, the only reason there's going to be a hell, is because God is good. And because he's good, he cannot allow evil to ultimately win. See, sir, if the atheist is correct, evil ultimately wins. Because if the atheist is correct, there is no day of judgment, there is no heaven, there is no hell. Which means, the good die young, as Billy Joel puts it, evil corrupt people win the day. That's just the way the ball bounces. That, sir, is part of the despair of atheism. If you're willing to take your atheism seriously, you've got to realize corrupt, wealthy, powerful, evil people win, and they rip off innocent, weak people. That's just the way the ball bounces. I don't, I don't think you answered me. I think you just started talking. I'm sorry. What didn't I answer that you asked? Uh, I just asked if you, if you yourself were God, would you punish somebody that lived virtuously but did not accept you? Sir, I have answered you head to head. I have told you that if you live virtuously and never sin once, you're going straight to heaven. Secondly, I told you that, speaking for myself, I'm a sinner, and Christ communicates the only way I can be made right with God is through the forgiveness that he offers through the death on the cross. And thirdly, I pointed out that I'm glad there's a hell, I'm glad there's a day of judgment, I'm glad there's a heaven, because that means that justice, goodness, love, mercy ultimately triumph and evil will ultimately be destroyed in hell. I am very grateful for that. So I you trust would you would be people also. For not following you, though, right? Pardon? You would punish people for not following you even if they live by your rules. For not believing you, if you were God. For doing evil, people separate themselves from God. For doing evil, people will go to hell if they reject God's forgiveness.
Do you have a problem with that? Yes. What's your problem? <laughs> it's I already I already explained it. I'm not. No, you haven't explained it. Please explain to me what is okay. your problem right. with God because He's good wiping out all evil in hell. What's your problem with that? Okay, if you sinned more than me, a lot more than me, but you accepted Jesus' uh, forgiveness. So you live, uh, or not live, you exist in, its, in bliss after, after life. But I, I sinned once, but uh, I don't accept Jesus as God, so I suffer eternally after life. Do you think that's just? I promise you, sir, if you've just sinned once, you'll be in heaven. That, uh, you have nothing to worry about, sir. If you've only sinned once, <laughs> you'll be in heaven. How can you promise that? According to your, to your beliefs, that's But if you true. have a real problem with sin, the way I do, uh -huh. you're in desperate need of Christ. Uh, I don't think so. Have you ever date raped? <laughs> no. Good. No. Have you ever lusted? Yeah. Yeah, so have I. Have you ever yeah. brought a whip down in the back of a black slave? No, not No, recently. good. Neither have I. Have you ever had a racist attitude? Uh, probably. Probably, yeah. So have I. Have you ever stolen a lot of money from a bank, sir? No. No, neither have I. Good for you. Have you ever coveted? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so have I. So you see, sir, you and I haven't just sinned once. Right. You and I have a real problem with sin. And that sin separates us from God. Christ bled and died on a cross to forgive the two little wretched sinners that are having a conversation right now. You and me. Now, if you and I look at Christ and say, sorry, I'm not interested, we're making a decision. And the decision is, we reject God's forgiveness. See, the reason I can't accept God is because uh, God has not shown himself to me indefinitely, uh, so, so that I have no doubt that uh, he exists. If God is omnipotent, why can't he just show himself to every person so they know whether or not God exists? And that's right. Then why so what do you want him to do? I want him to show himself to me and say, what's up, I'm God. Like in somewhere, you know, he can do whatever he wants, but show himself indefinitely to me that uh, he's God and say, here's, here's, you know, here's cut and dry, here's the decision. You can uh, choose me, go to heaven. You cannot choose me, go to, you know, whatever. Show himself to me, but I don't have that, so I don't think it's right for, to be punished for that. But uh, you you're not. It is. You're not, not going right. to be punished for that, sir. You're going to be punished for the sins that you have committed, the same way I've committed sins. We You're both not have. going to be punished, though, because you accept forgiveness. Because I turn to Christ for forgiveness, and He has forgiven me, and I'm pleading with you, make the same decision. Well, turn to you Christ for to forgiveness. To me. Why do you have to plead to me? Why can't God show Himself to me if He's, if he's a just, nice God? Okay, now how do you want Him to show Himself to you? Uh, right now. Where? Right here. Okay, good. And, and how much time? Uh, one second. One second. Okay. Oh, he, can, he can sit here for a few hours and talk to me. All right. Now, do you have any problem with the guy who looks into his girlfriend's face and says, you say that you love me. I don't believe it unless you have sex with me. Do you have any problem with that? Uh, not really. Not really. <laughs> Thanks for your honesty. This guy has a question. I think I understand why you have a problem with God. No, I just want God to... The same way you have a problem with a woman who says, I love you, and then you say to her, oh, oh yeah, prove it, have sex with me, and if I she doesn't, no, then you say, no, I don't believe you love me. You, uh, you asked a different question. You, you have a problem with those people, and he said he doesn't have a problem with those people. If that's what a person wants, then I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, don't, don't well, if you don't have a problem with that person, then I'm sure you wouldn't have too big a problem doing it yourself. But you, you didn't answer my question. Not, I've answered you, said you said head to head time and time again. No, you didn't. All right, then Just what did I answer? Please why doesn't tell me. God show himself right now and show all these people that he's God and show, uh, tell them that they have a decision between him and uh, not him? Good question. Thank you. Because in the same way... Uh -huh. that I would question your genuineness if you looked into your girlfriend's face and said, unless you have sex with me, I don't believe you love me. Uh, so I question your genuineness when you say to the almighty creator of heaven and earth, hey, by the way, in order for me to believe in you, right here, right now, and I'm giving you not one second, I'm giving you 60 seconds. Bingo, starting now. So what? Sir, there's a problem of motive here. <laughs> a not... big problem. What's the problem? Lack of genuineness. So if someone had the right motive, he would appear. 
I can promise you, Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Well, I'm, I'm Seek, searching, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to seek does not mean, by the way, right here, right now, then I'll believe. That's not seeking. That's playing a manipulative game. God doesn't play your games. It's that simple. God does not play your games. Well, now, have I answered your question or not? Um, not really, but... Yeah. Not really. How did I evade your question? Uh, because you kind of, you make bad analogies first, and then, uh, you, <laughs> you kind of, I don't know. It is embarrassing, isn't it? No. It is um, embarrassing, I agree. I'm not a public... Embarrassing. Uh, yeah, it's really embarrassing. Why you be embarrassed? You, to begin to realize that, wow, maybe my motives are not the most pure motives no, no, in the no, world, no, no. I, when I, I'm I, saying, hey, God, <laughs> for me to believe that you exist, you're going to appear right here, right now. Yeah, that's not... Yeah, that's, I, that's I, kind I of sad. I have a problem with that. Um, I've been searching for truth. I, I am searching for truth. I think everybody here is searching for truth. Then all so, you got to do is read the Gospels. Are you searching for truth? Yeah. Okay. Have you read the Gospels? No. Well, please read them. No. Check them out. <laughs> no, okay, fine. Uh, in this conversation... The student raises a question that strikes at the core of Christian beliefs. Is it more important to accept Jesus than to live a moral life? This question highlights a common tension between faith and moral actions in the context of salvation, particularly when people question the fairness of eternal separation for a good person who hasn't accepted Jesus. Christian teaching emphasizes that both faith in Jesus and moral behavior are essential. Jesus explained that the greatest commandments are to love God fully and love others, Matthew 22, 37 to 40. This shows that a moral life centered on love is a natural outcome of genuine faith. Accepting Jesus isn't about sidelining virtue, but about inviting a transformative relationship that empowers us to live morally, motivated by God's love and grace. The Apostle Paul clarifies that salvation is a gift from God through faith, not something earned by our actions. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. The Ephesians 2, 8, 9. This underscores the Christian view that while moral behavior matters, it cannot substitute for faith. Sin, inherent in all humans, separates us from God. As Paul states in Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. According to Christianity, no amount of virtue alone can bridge this gap. Forgiveness is needed, which Christians believe Jesus uniquely offers. The Bible's emphasis on faith in Jesus isn't about exclusive requirements, but about addressing the reality of human brokenness. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14:6. Christians interpret this as meaning that Jesus is the only solution to humanity's spiritual separation from God, not an arbitrary rule. In this view, Jesus' death and resurrection provide a way for reconciliation and forgiveness that moral efforts alone cannot achieve. The student's concern about moral people who don't accept Jesus facing eternal separation is understandable. Christianity teaches that God respects human choice. If someone chooses to live apart from him, God honors that choice, even into eternity. The Bible describes eternal life with God as a gift that is freely offered but not forced, Romans 6.23. This isn't about punishment, but about the natural consequence of a decision to accept or reject God's invitation to relationship. In Christianity, both faith in Jesus and a transformed, virtuous life matter deeply. Accepting Jesus involves a commitment to moral living yet acknowledges that our best efforts are ultimately insufficient to restore a relationship with a holy God. Through Jesus, Christians believe they find forgiveness, inner transformation, and the promise of eternal life. For those who want to explore this further, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis and The Reason for God by Timothy Keller offer insightful perspectives on faith, virtue, and the Christian understanding of salvation.